I have to say I'm very surprised to see Infect at the top tables. There's a lot of situations where you're leaning really heavily on Blighted Agent with this deck, but it still has a lot of explosive power. So we have this matchup then of Elves versus Infect. Um, I guess, first of all, is it, do you have something someone's favored here in the matchup? So the matchup is largely a straight race. The die roll seems pretty important. Um, on the play, I like Infect a good amount. There's both the Blighted Agents to get ahead and Berserk. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start the match here. Uh, for Chris Allen, starting on Dryad Arbor, Andrew Jessup is going to Green Sun Zenith into a Dryad Arbor. And there's a lot of pressure on Allen to have a Blighted Agent in this matchup. There's really no way to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Blighted Agent just gets to keep connecting. Although this, this is legacy, not modern. So Glistener Elf, in combination with some pump spells in Berserk, can just run over all the little elves as well. So fetch for Tropical Island here from Chris Allen. That turns on the daze in his hand. Because he started the game on Dried Arbor, he was not able to daze. So now he'll actually brainstorm. So no Infector just yet. Mm -hmm. And this is not one of the better matchups in Legacy for the card days. No, it's got a very small window. I mean, if he doesn't day something on this turn, he, he may never get to. Right. Yeah, frequently, if you're on the draw against Elves, I've certainly boarded days out plenty against this deck. Then again, when you have a set of Forked Bolt, it's a little, <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah, yeah. when you're, you're just straight casting creatures against them, it's real bad. All right, go to Andrew's second turn. He's going to start with Glimpse of Nature. Chris might just daze for value here. Now, you get to draw a card on casting a creature, not on a creature resolve. So he's going to try. We'll see. Andrew's kind of deciding. Wait, does, does he want to play on that? He does have what looks like a wooded foothills. And maybe also a Cavern of Souls. Cavern's pretty nice. He can play it to pay for a daze and then cast a creature off it. Opts not to play his land. He's going to go ahead and run a creature into a possible daze. It's going to be Birch Lore Ranger. So he does draw a card off cast. So Chris can counter it. Andrew still gets the card. If he's able to resolve a creature here and produce a Gaia's Cradle, that's a huge win for him. That's the strong incentive to not play a land here. That's the potential upside that he sees. Chris will daze the elf. Andrew still draws. Now I keep going. He drew another copy of Glimpse of Nature. Land and pass. So really the glimpse just cycled there. Mm -hmm. So go back to Allen. Replays his tropical island, and here is a ponder still looking for that creature. Pierce, ponder, vines of vastwood. A lot of times it's a, it's free to ponder and to ponder, but there's not a second blue source for Chris Allen, so he's actually going to shuffle off this. Well, this is a really slow hand for the Infect deck. Yeah, in a matchup where you don't want to be slow. Mm -hmm. a shuffle and a draw. Chris looking for Ink Moth, Blighted Agent. Found a blue card, but... Don't believe it's an ink. It's a. It's yeah, I, believe agent. It, I believe that was the Eternal Master's Force of Will, which right. is which is all well and good. His hand is pretty loaded up on pump spells, which is nice. But he has to produce a way to actually win the game. Well, he hits in for one with Dryad Arbor. That's probably not how the game is going <laughs> to end. Yeah, these Force of Wills are also. If I'm wrong here, they're not particularly good against elves either. Mm -hmm. There's some spells that matter a lot that you can fight over. Uh, things like Glimpse of Nature, Natural Order. But uh, Andrew's deck's just full up on threats that he can deploy. On end step there, Andrew goes out and fetches for another Dryad Arbor. He's very much rewarded as he draws Gaia's Cradle for the turn. And now he's going to cast Glimpse again. He's still got a bunch of cards in hand. That one does invite a force. Yeah, force pitching force here for Alan. Jessup uh, certainly not done with this turn just yet. 
No, he'll play Gaia's Cradle, it looks like. Start with Elvish Visionary. That Cradle currently tapping for three. Make three green. Looks like it's going to be Green Sun's Zenith. Might just, yeah, I'll just get Symbiote to bounce the Visionary. Untap a Dryad Arbor, use the one mana floating to recast Visionary. That's a combo, Wirewood Symbiote, Elvish Visionary. Yeah, so Cradle made three. He Zenith for one, floating one green. Got Symbiote, bounced Visionary to untap Dryad Arbor. That's the second one. Picking up Elvish Visionary to Wirewood Symbiote might be the most common game action that Andrew Jessup makes in Magic. Yeah, we see it, I mean, pretty frequently when they play a deck. Back over to Chris Allen, he drew Ink Moth Nexus, so he'll play that. Now he has an Infect creature. In his hand, he's still full up on, a, I believe he has Pendlehaven, Berserk, Invigorate. Okay, so that, that's a kill. He has to survive till the next turn, which is not a guarantee with no. what Jessup is already presenting. Yeah, says go. Jessup deciding if he just wants to end step, bounce the Visionary. Says no. Has bigger plans for his mana, it appears. Well, I would think if you're in Jessup's spot, you, you kind of have to assume you're dead next turn, right? Yeah, exactly. There's Nettle Sentinel. Cavern of Souls. It's going to make five, six mana, seven, eight. Just cast Crater <laughs> of Behemoth. Cavern naming Beast, I believe. And there are six creatures under Jessup's control because of the two Dryad Arbors. Yeah, Symbiote going to bounce Nettle Sentinel to untap Dryad Arbor. Yeah, 6-6 six, six to this whole team. This is very lethal. The pump alone is 24. Yeah, and so even through a blocker, it's still dead. Sometimes the Infect deck gets a little tricky and uses this Berserk to kill one of your creatures, though this is just a lethal attack. That's, that's not a line that's available here. Generally isn't going to be live against the Elves deck whatsoever. Let's go ahead and count this one up. All right, so there were six creatures in those cast, so the Crater Hoof Behemoth trigger... Yeah, I see Chris Allen's going to count that one up. Crater of giving Andrew's team plus six, plus six. And Andrew Jessup with Elves is going to go ahead and take game one. Chris Allen keeping a hand, I suppose, with Invigorate plus Berserk, a really powerful opener. It's short and infector, but he had a ponder. There's mm -hmm. a lot to like in it. Yeah, he saw some extra cards. He had a lot of what he wanted. Makes enough sense to keep, but it didn't pay off. All right, I'm going to go to the sideboard then for Chris Allen. Uh, 14 different cards available here. The only multiple one is two copies of Submerge, which is usually pretty good against green decks. Mm -hmm. The other one of Force of Will, Bazooka Bog, Caracas, Crop Rotation, uh, which can get the Bog, um, Spell Skite, Sylvan Library, Flusterstorm, Hydroblast, Cross and Grip, Breeding Corruptor, Surgical Extraction, Invasive Surgery, and Pithing Needle. Yeah, so the big hits are those two submerged. That can buy him a little bit of time. This matchup is largely just a straight race, so that can slow the Elves player down. Totally reasonable to bring that in. Uh, the extra force of will to fight over natural order, glimpse of nature, that can buy him some time as well. That stuff all seems pretty reasonable. Uh, crop rotation, when you know that it's just going to resolve, just to have an extra copy of Ink Moth Nexus, that seems totally reasonable as well. And he could bring in Fluster, Flusterstorm for the same reason that he wants the Force of Will, though it's not particularly strong. On Andrew's side, he's got a set of Thoughtseize, a set of Abrupt Decay, uh, two Cabal Therapy, two Surgical Extraction, and two Pithing Needle. These are four combo decks mm -hmm. to go, you know, to board in against unfair decks. In fact, is an unfair deck. Um, how, which of these does he want? He doesn't want to overboard here, though. He's almost as fast as Infect to begin with. Right. He doesn't have anything that's just a straight removal spell. You know, you can Thought Seize to get a Blighted Agent out of the hand when you're on the draw. It seems pretty medium. So you oh. can at least take care of Berserk. If Abrupt that's a Decay? Does factor. that work? It works against everything but Ink Moth Nexus. And you can use Pithing Needle to stop the Ink Moth Nexus from activating. So he has a lot of kind of B minus C plus cards. Yeah. So he wants. Maybe board them in, but I think perhaps not. Thoughtseize is the most likely one here because it can at least hit a pump spell, even if it doesn't necessarily get the actual infect threat. Yeah, that much makes sense. Well, Alan will be on the play here for game number two. 
For those of you joining us, this is our legacy event here in Season 1. We have won every season. By no means is it our only event here in Season 1, though there's still a lot of opportunities to come out to the SCG Tour. You see here in April, on this was the season so far as we made our way to Worcester. But we have more events coming. We have four more Opens before our Season 1 Invitational. So we have, coming up in three weeks, we have the Atlanta Open. That's going to be in standard. We have our next second team event. This was a change of format from earlier because of just how popular the event was. When May 20th to 21st, we'll be back in Louisville to play a team event here in the tour. So that means Legacy will be here as well as Standard and Modern. You need a three-person team. Each of you plays one format. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, we got to cover the first one of those in Baltimore. It was a blast. And if you want to play this event, strongly recommend pre-registering. Yeah, absolutely. The following week, we'll be ba back in Baltimore for a Modern Open. We take a week off before we go to Charlotte to play Modern and then end the Season 1 Invitational. It's June 30th through July 2nd, Modern and Standard in Roanoke, Virginia. Now, when you come out to our events, you do get playmats here for Season 1, depending on whether it's an Infinite Challenge event, a Classic, or the main event. If it's a Standard event, you get a copy of the Aether Hub playmat. For Modern, we're giving away the Aether Vial in Masterpiece series here from Kaladesh. See kind of a theme going on with Ether. So we're going to give away Ether. Gamble. Ether Gamble <laughs> for Legacy events. That's the Eternal Masters art. So all of those are available for free with entry to events. Uh, with any Season 1, Open or Classic, you get these exclusive play mats. But they will only be available through the end of June. So you're going to want to make it out to one of what was it, five more events mm -hmm. left in the season. Yeah, some really nice offerings as well. The team event, of course. New standard with Amaket, fresh off the presses. Yeah, that's actually going to be the, the one in Atlanta in three weeks. That will be with the that'll be the weekend after Amaket's pre-release. Get your chance to play with the new cards. Always very exciting. The week one open. Yeah. Now, actually, this is a bit different than what we've been seeing. For those wondering about uh, rotation, um, we're back to the two-year rotation, which means nothing. Amonkhet comes out, nothing falls off the back yet. So Amonkhet is just going to be added to current standard. Feels like Gideon Ally of Zandikar has been standard legal for the better part of my life. Yeah, uh, <laughs> under the old system, uh, he that battle for Zendikar would have rotated. Um, but now cards, that, yeah, we only do rotation once a year. So Gideon does did kind of get an extra six months off that change. Hmm. Along with Ulamog, he's still around. Yeah, that one's kind of been more in the background. It had a period where it was really everywhere. We're watching Gideon in this tournament. We yeah, saw that come off the miracles. sideboard of some Miracles players. Yeah, Frank Scarin in round three using, really was his MVP in his matchup against Jay Imperiali's Pox deck. Mm -hmm. That, that card, it's, it's easily top three Planeswalkers all time. So what's your third, then? Uh, like, like I didn't so ask like, what the first is, right? Sure, that, yeah, that's yeah. obvious. We, we all know number one is Jason the Mind Sculptor. A lot of people fight me when I put Karn Liberated over Liliana of the Veil. Liliana of the Veil okay. is like yeah, a lot of people's answers. third. Yeah, I mean, certainly in Legacy, that would be number three, right? Yes, yeah. We kind of just Karn look has at... This Karn has a thing where he costs exi costing exactly seven is a really convenient thing for him in modern. Right. Yeah, also, I would rather have Karn in my cube deck than Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Well, well, yeah. Yeah, uh, that that matters to me when I'm okay. making this ranking. I mean, so then is like Jace Memory Adept in the discussion? No, he's only good in one format. Cube. Yeah. He's really good in cube. Oh yeah. He's like my, he's probably the best Jace in cube. Yeah, he's not even in my Grixis cube actually. Okay, but Mind Sculptor is. Oh yeah. My sculptor is nice. But memory adapt's too good for the cube. It's just too boring. Yeah, you just, I play it, and then it's like, if you don't kill it this turn, you lose. Yep. What? That's fun. Play it zero. Go. <laughs> Can you kill it? No? Okay, uh, next game. <laughs> Chris starts off on Inkmoth Nexus. He did take a mulligan. And it's going to be Nettle Sentinel to start for Andrew Jessup. But this game, Chris does have an Infector. Maybe even two. His draw there is... Going to be a copy of Wasteland. Listener Elf. Yeah, I don't know if he has colored mana. Plays that Wasteland. does not produce colored mana. Though it is an art that is a callback to City of Brass, which does produce colored mana. Yeah, maybe maybe he, maybe he could just like write 19 on a score pad <laughs> and cast that Glistener Elf. Is that is that where you're going with it? I advise <laughs> against these plays. Chris is all in on these new artworks, playing with the Force of Wills and the Wastelands. 
Do you know that Eternal Master's Force of Will is actually more expensive than the and original alliances? printing? People really like that art. Well, I think there's some people that just want their whole deck to be new card face, and I get that. You'd have to play, you can do it with Berserk too, I suppose, right? Yeah, there's like the yep. From the Vault, ex, From the Vault Band cards. It's exiled from the Vault. It's from the Vault Band <laughs> cards. <laughs> yeah, uh, is, is, is Berserk exiled or is it 20? It's one of them, who cares? Pithing Needle for Andrew Jessup. You're Invigorates, there's a dual dex Invigorate. <laughs> This I pithing think, needle's probably not I think not we can get wasteland. there. I think we can make every card new card face. I don't know about crop rotation. I think you're missing on that one. Sylvan Library, you can. I think we're most of the way there. Uh, the pithing needle is going to name Inkmoth Nexus. So not not, not wasteland. wasteland. <laughs> As Andrew swings in for two. And remember, Pithy Needle just shuts off activated abilities. The Ink Moth can still produce the colorless mana that will continue to be as useless as it was on turn two. <laughs> he's like, yeah, great. Chris gets more colorless mana. He looks at his hand of, you know, Ponder, Glistener, Elf. He, yeah. The best use of colorless mana in his deck is activating Ink Moth Nexus, mm -hmm. which... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Andrew then hits in for one with Nettle Sentinel, plays Birch Lore Rangers, and untaps the Sentinel. And Chris looks like his speculative six not, not making here. No more lands, no colored mana, no plays. It's a, hard hand to, it's a hard hand to keep and a hard hand to mulligan. The Infect deck is another one that does not lend itself to mulliganing particularly well. I, I mean, it can... Yeah. I mean, Certainly in this matchup where it's all about racing, there's a little yeah. bit more incentive to going down to five. Yeah, you know, you don't really need any of the... If you have Invigorate, Berserk, Ink Moth, Nexus, Land, you don't really need much. Mm -hmm. A swing here for three puts Chris down to 15. Now Andrew's just taking his time and other Birchlar Rangers. And just play, play some one ones. A heritage Druid. He's got a lot of mana. There's a land for Chris. This can get Tropical Island. Now, one Crater Hoof or Green Sun Zenith in Andrew's hand is, if not lethal, is very close. No, and actually, it is lethal here. Mm -hmm. He makes a bunch of ma makes mana. Casts Crater Hoof, which will untap Nettle Sentinel. Then he'll use the Rangers to untap, to bounce the rest of his lands, untap them, swing with a bunch of large creatures. Mm -hmm. Because of that Pithing Needle, Chris can't win this turn. Maybe he could have, it's possible if he has Force of Will for Crater Hoof that he can survive. Yeah, he can for certainly the buy some time that way. Yeah. He may need something like that. So he'll cast Glistener Elf. And pass. Has Invigorate in hand and Vines of Vastwood. It's going to submerge Heritage Druid. Yeah, Jessup goes to crack a fetch land. He'll have to shuffle that one away. Well, now he doesn't have the mana for Crater Roof, so that's some good defense played by Chris. Mm -hmm. If he finds a Gaia's Cradle, though, he'll have all kinds of mana. Waste. Chris is going to Wasteland away the Dryad Arbor, which Andrew will use to the Wanger to put it back in his hand. So I, it looks like Chris has bought himself another turn here with those plays. Mm -hmm. Jessup will just attack for four, puts Allen down to ten. Jessup's not even going to mess around. Just goes for Abrupt Decay on the Glistener Elf straight away. Yeah, untaps his Nettle Sentinel. And there's another thing with that mana situation from Chris is still coming back to get him. Um, does have Vines of Vastwood in his hand. That actually counters Abrupt Decay. But no green mana to cast it. He'll Brainstorm. Three more non-lands. 
without any mana, he's not going to have any plays. Mm -hmm. That's going to just about do it. Uh, one of those cards was Gitaxian Pro. Chris is well past the point of caring about what's in Jessup's hand. Yeah, I mean, he certainly doesn't want to pay two life for it. That's He's at 10 facing down 5 power. Mm -hmm. I guess it, maybe it's a two-turn clock either way. But the, the issue is that he doesn't have a shuffle effect and he just put two cards back on top with Brainstorm. Yep. He's got Force of Will in his hand, but he doesn't have any outs here and he's not going to draw any. Right. And Jessup just currently presenting a two turn clock. Yeah. Just swing the board, play Elvis Visionary, say go. Could even just sit on an abrupt decay if you wanted to. No real reason for it, but it's an option. Yeah, so Elvish Visionary played here, bounces. He just has to figure out how he's going to lose. Yeah. It would yeah. need to be something that can destroy Pithing Needle and leave Chris with enough mana to make the Ink Both Nexus in one turn. And you know, there's, there's enough free pump spells where the actual making the Ink Moth Nexus lethal is not terribly hard to understand. But there's really nothing Jessup can do about that. He has no flying blockers. His Abrupt Decay can't tag no. the Ink Moth Nexus. Chris is going to use Force of Will Pitching Ponder to counter the Screen Sun Zenith. Puts him down to nine. So swing is for four from Jessup. Chris goes to five. Yeah, and Jessup just might win the really slow way. <laughs> Says go. Last draw for Chris. This is a known draw, though. It's Brainstorm. I don't know exactly what he's hoping to hit here. He, he can cast it, and he'll see two new cards. One of them has to be a land, so he really only gets one card. If he casts a taxi and probe first, he'd be looking at more fresh cards, mm -hmm. and he's just dead on the following turn anyway. Though I don't think he's drawing to anything anyhow. Yeah, this, so this one's just going to... Pretty quickly go in Jessup's favor. Picked up another Ink Moth Nexus off of his Brainstorm here. That uh, That's not going to do anything here. Foothills gives him a shuffle, but he has to close here. He's just facing down lethal. All Jessup has to do to untap that Sentinel is cast any green spell. That fetch land goes off. That means the non-Nettle Sentinel creatures are already lethal. Uses the Brainstorm. He gets... To shuffle away, he's going to get a Tropical Island. But yeah, he certainly can't cast Probe. Or really survive. He'll cast Noble Hierarch. If I guess he's hoping that Andrew has no green spells to untap the Nettle Sentinel. If that's the case, he has another turn. Uh, but that's not the case. <laughs> right. Also, Andrew can untap it with the, the, the Rangers. And he'll abrupt decay the blocker. And that's going to be the match. Andrew Jessup with Elves improves to 7-0 with a clean win over Chris Allen's Infect deck. And second time on camera here for Andrew Jessup. And really, the four convincing game wins.